Hi guys, it's Dr. Weiner again, and I want to talk to you today about something very interesting called surface area to volume ratios, and it's repeated throughout the medical field, particularly in aesthetics. And let me just boil down to the specifics. So the surface area of a sphere is what we're going to go after. It's 4 pi r squared. And the volume of the sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed. So when you do the surface area to volume ratio, you have a ratio of 3 over r. So the bottom line is, is that when you increase the radius of a sphere, its surface area to volume ratio goes down. And that's actually bad in most instances. So what you are after in aesthetics and in medicine in general is a high surface area to volume ratio. And I'm going to show you why. So outside of medicine, let's just look at things that have surface area to volume ratios that are important. Let's take a little kid and let's take an adult and let's put them out there in the cold. So which one is going to get colder faster? It's the little kid. And you know why? Because he has a high surface area to volume ratio. That means the cold affects his skin surface a lot more than the adult because he has a low surface area to volume ratio. Let's take another step. Why do you chew your food up a lot? The reason why is if you have big chunks of food in your belly, the enzymes have a hard time digesting it. So if they're really small little pieces, then the enzymes degrade it better, your digestion is better. Let's go one step further, and I showed this on my stories. Let's say you're cooking your chicken, and you want to cook it very thoroughly. So if you have a really big piece of chicken, and you're trying to cook it, it's very hard to cook it on the inside. But if you make those little slices in the chicken, what you're doing is you're increasing the surface area. So by doing that, the heat can get into the chicken a little bit better, and you cook the chicken more thoroughly. So let's take that into medicine. So let's take, for example, fat grafting, okay? And there's two types of fat grafting that I'm going to go after. So you have your big lobules of fat that you're injecting, and you have your small lobules of fat that you're injecting. So which one is actually going to survive better and have a better result? It's going to be your small globules. And the reason why is because they have a large surface area to volume ratio. What happens is these red lines are blood vessels. They can give oxygen and nutrients to the smaller fat globules a lot better than the bigger ones. So let's go to this graph because this graph is repeated over and over. So what happens with fat globules that are big? Well, you have an outside ring of tissue where you have survival of the fat graft. Then you have an inner ring that doesn't survive that well, but can regenerate and give you fat. And then you have an inner area here where it's necrosis and it never comes back. So we can use the same analogy for profound versus genius using the fat. So this is sort of what profound looks like, very large coagulation zones. And this is what genius looks like, the very small coagulation zone. So this is the preferred type of coagulation zone versus the larger type. This is going to heal faster. It's going to be safer. So why were fractional lasers invented? It all has to do with surface area to volume ratios. So if you have a very large necrotic area of lasering, laser resurfacing, it's going to take a long time because that surface area to volume ratio is very low. But if you do a fractional laser, you have very small areas of coagulation or ablation, the body can heal it better, so it's a lot safer. So that's where the whole industry and whole medicine is going, is for these large surface area to volume ratios. So the point I want to drive home with fillers is that surface area to volume ratio is very pertinent. So if you're going to give a large bowl of filler, you're going to end up with an area that is very poorly vascularized with this filler globule inside of it. I propose that you should give thin linear threads or microboluses so that the vascularity to the area around the filler is much higher. I think you're going to have less complications with infections and nodules, although it's hard to prove, than if you give large boluses. So please, thin linear threads with cannulas or very small microboluses with the needle. So in summary, we're looking for that high surface area to volume ratio. So really small areas of either necrosis, ablation, or injection for optimal results. Thank you.